Welcome back, friends. Here I am at home shooting my intro. So today I'm going to share with you a sped up version of one of my Patreon videos. This was a collage where I did start to finish. I did papers first. I did a little bit of gold leaf and then we created the collage. So let's get started. This is going to be a blue collage. It's going to have a tiny little bit of that paper and a big chunk of this bold graphic paper that's printed on rice paper. And that's going to go towards the bottom, sort of like the bottom third. Um, the two thirds on the top is going to be a combination of a little tiny bit of this paper, but I'm going to make a lot of papers that are that teal color. And we're going to also have some gold leaf. So a little bit of everything. And I was going to try to do a paper with that quinacridone red, but changed my mind. So the first thing I started with was creating the papers. And this actually is um, manganese blue and rubber bands. And I was going to do manganese blue on a lighter teal. So in that jar just above the plate, I had mixed up some teal with a little bit of titanium white to lighten it up a bit. I didn't want it straight out of the bottle and uh, I wanted a much lighter shade. I actually did lightened it up again and made some papers that were even lighter. And I wanted sort of a two-tone paper. I'm trying to be a little bit more subtle with this one and not have super bright papers. But that one that has the quinacridone red and the teal, I love that paper. So I wanted to use it in a really small, like in really small sections. And you'll see when I start the collage part of this. So I'm adding a little bit more white, as you could see, for the next paper that I'm going to do. Because I, as I could see from the brayer, the, the sheet off on the right, it just still didn't look light enough. So I'm testing the lightness with my, with my stick over on that paper. And I'm going to wait for it to dry a little bit just to see if it really dries, you know, much lighter. But sometimes you have to add a lot more white than you think. Anyway, so this is kind of a subtle, you know, manganese blue on teal. Uh, and now we're going to do, I'm going to go even lighter, I decide. We're going to do um, a gold paint with this, um, with this teal, this light, light teal. So I have this Sargent gold paint that I used recently on the plate and discovered it actually does a pretty good job. So this was the goldish paint I had. I didn't want the bronze because I'm going to use gold leaf and I wanted it to look as close to the gold leaf as possible. So I'm picking up with the deli paper to leave me the ghost because that's what I want for my blue paper. Getting into all the nooks and crannies. And I didn't get like a really clean print so I'm going to do a second pull. I really want to get all of that gold out of the background and just leave me with the rubber band imprint. Okay, so that's a little better. So after this dries, I'm going to put the blue down. So like I said in my intro, this is a full video that I did on Patreon for my patrons. It had a few more um, jelly printing done at a slower speed and me explaining each step of the way and then going into the collage. It was a much longer video. So I'm just giving you a taste of this piece that I really was very happy with in the end. And this is in my show at Plunge Resort here in Lauderdale by the Sea. 
I was very happy with this. So I just wanted you to see, get a, get a touch of this um, experiment that I did. This is going to be a 12 by 12 collage. I, I wanted to try it smaller before I go and try and do something much larger. But I'm very, very happy with the rubber bands in metallic. Like whoever, whoever would have thought. <laughs> anyway, so these are the papers that I'm going to be working with in this collage. And the, the bold letters for the bottom is, is what really makes this whole thing. And that little bit of paper, I'm just going to use this in the slightest sort of way, kind of in the background, you'll, you'll see. And I'm mostly going to tear the papers. So I also divide up my board, like I said, at that bottom about third is going to be where the bold papers are. And I'm also going to measure out towards the top areas and the middle areas where I think the gold leaf should go. So I'm not, I'm just kind of roughing it out a little bit. I want that upper right hand corner to have some gold. I want a little bit offset to the left just above the black and white papers. And I'm just going to do strips of this other busier paper. And once I decided where my gold leaf was going to be, I put down my, my sizing for the gold. Now the sizing is the glue that you use. It dries to it like a, a light tack and it allows the gold leaf, which is very thin, to just stick to it. And then you use a very light brush to brush off the excess and to sort of burnish it into the board as well. And any spots that are like where the gold didn't stick, you can always go in and patch it up. And I use the wax paper to cling, to get the gold leaf to cling to the wax paper doesn't always work, but for the most part, it works pretty good. And then I save all the little extra big bits of pieces in a jar because you can always use those later. So my gold leaf is looking good so far. It's a little bit rough around the edges, but we're going to be overlaying papers, so I'm not concerned with that. So now I have to trim down my black um, papers just so that um, I could get it, you know, started anyway. Um, and obviously it wasn't big enough paper to wrap around, so I'm using two papers. So I'm cutting, an, you know, a clean edge for my bold paper. And we're going to do some overlapping with some of the blue papers, so I'm not that concerned about the straightness and everything I just want to I want to get it down there as straight as possible so it doesn't look a little bit uh, like it's going downhill or anything and I'm wrapping everything I'm going to wrap around the edges and to the back I'm making just lining up making sure that I'm straight and overlapping on the gold using my catalyst wedge to, you know, smooth everything out a little bit. And this becomes like wrapping a package, you know, you have to miter the corners and get everything nice and flat.
So as you can see, I really wrapped all the way around to the to the back of the the wood. So I'm, I'm planning where I'm going to cut this other piece to patch because my my paper was not big enough to go all the way around. And I was thinking of using that dotted tissue, but I, I eventually changed my mind. But I'm, I'm looking to see how these papers should overlap, showing the gold through them and deciding how much of that red and, and teal paper I want to use. And of course, we need some more of that golden blue paper. But I was seeing that it was starting to look too, like, evenly coming in from both sides. I don't know. It was just starting to really bug me. So I'm changing it up a bit. I'm just moving the papers around trying to decide which which works best. So this fabulous little piece that had like the I want that to sort of be a focal point in the middle. It was like where two tightly wound rubber bands were kind of close to each other and they made a really nice design. So my composition is starting to come together. I'm still not 100% sure about it. I'm, I'm still playing with some ideas. I have to get some more of that red and teal paper in here. But I'm gluing down the ones that I know for sure. And, it, and of course you have to work from the bottom up. So whatever is going to be sort of underneath and peeking through, you got to get that down first. So all of these papers are rice paper, including the black and white. That was printed with an inkjet printer on a rice paper that I found online that is printable. Now I will say it does bleed. So when I went to put on a, um, not a varnish, but I think I did a uh, gloss, um, like a pouring medium to make it super glossy, it bled, I just kind of, the black just bled into the white. But you'll see at the end, my solution for that was um, to add some white brushwork. And it, it turned out perfect. So I'm going to put a tiny little piece of that red and teal.
break there. Now, now it's really starting to come together. And this gold paint looks really good with the gold leaf. I was surprised. So I just want a little bit of that red and teal paper showing through. I don't want a lot of it. In any medium that goes over the gold, I immediately like scrape off with my catalyst wedge. While it's still wet. Because you see the brush strokes. Okay, so then I let this dry and and then put you know put all the wrap it around all the edges and uh, and then we can move on okay so I tried to plan ahead and I used this matte finish on that black and white paper to seal it I wanted to seal it really good to prevent any bleeding always thinking ahead now I need to use the um, GAC 200 the uh, from Golden to really seal all of this so that the gold does not tarnish because this is gold metal. Um, anyway, I'm deciding that I need to add a little bit of that paper to the sides. So I'm going to do that, but you will see that I, when I seal it, that's, that was where our problems first began. I really thought that when I sealed the paper before I even glued it down with the matte finished by um, Aileen, I think it's pronounced, or I, anyway, Aileen matte finish spray. It's almost like a fixative. It was supposed to prevent any bleeding, and I've used it before, but I guess this was just a little too much black because it's so bold, and um, anyway, it didn't quite work this time, but I had a solution. I always have a solution, and Again, happy accidents. Okay, so this is the GAC 200, GAC 200. And again, like I said, I sealed the black and white. And this should seal it some more, is what I'm thinking. But I could already see that there's like a softness happening around the edges of the black. Uh, but after that dried, and I then put on pouring medium, and that's when it really goes bad. Now with the two different types of sealing, I would have thought this would have been fine. But um, no, you'll start to see around the edges of the black, it starts bleeding into the white. So I was very upset at this point, but I thought, well, I just put all this time into this. I, I've got to keep going. So this takes a while to dry. So I, I did a single coat, pretty heavy coat, and I figured I'll just let it dry and we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll address this tomorrow and see. Um, anyway, the next day I came back with a fresh head and I said, I'm just going to dry brush over this. So I did a little bit of um, white dry brush. Here I, I'm just fixing a couple of places where I wasn't happy with it. But for the most part, I did some dry brushing over the edges. And it looks really cool now, I think. So 
So as you can see, I just like kind of reinforced some of the white, cleaned it up a little bit, and then pulled it very quickly over the edges without, you know, just being very random. So in the end, I was very, very happy with the way this came out. I think the dry brushing actually made this better. That's, that's just my opinion, I guess, but it gives it a lot more movement. So I'm very, very happy with this. I would love to figure out how to scale this up now, because this would be magnificent if it was really large, but I haven't a clue <laughs> how to do gel prints that that would be big enough to make this um, a magnificent large piece so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to create inspire and share and follow me over on patreon i'll leave the link below here are some more videos i think you'll enjoy i'll see you next time bye bye